What's up everyone? I've been getting a lot of requests to do a histogram video. How I do it, kind of what the heck is a histogram? What what does each thing represent? Eh, it's very confusing. Well, I'm here to give you what it is, the definition, how to break it down, how to look at it with a couple quick examples of histograms and at least three photos that I can go into and show you some things. Let's do this. <music> So I'm going to start off by reading this definition because this is the best definition ever. Now, don't fall asleep. A histogram is a bar graph of a frequency in which the widths of the bars are proportional to the classes and to the variable that has been divided. Yeah, I know. I'm sleeping too. Um, that is very confusing. Basically, a histogram is a graph that represents your exposure. It's the brightness of the exposed pixel, uh, pixels uh, in your image. So... Yeah, don't don't worry about that first uh, definition. It's very it's pretty much your exposure, what it looks like. It evaluates the whole scene, kind of like matrix metering type of thing. And here is one of the easiest ways to look at a histogram. You know, something like this. So it's really that your um your high points are your number of pixels in a tone uh, in in your image. So then it goes from, and as I said right here, it goes from your pure black. So no matter what histogram you're looking at, no matter how it's labeled, on the left side is your pure black. So usually, you know, all the way over here. In the middle, and I'll show you that in a second, is your, your midtones. And then on the far right is your pure white point. So it's basically what is darker in your images, your, uh, your shadows and everything like that. That's always the left side. On your right, it's, well, what's lighter? What are the highlights and everything uh, in your image? So to best represent this, I'll bring up this histogram right here. This is from uh, Lightroom because it's easier to see like this. You know, it shows you exactly what I just said. It's your it's your blacks, your darker your shadows on the left side. And you can see there isn't a ton of darks here, but there's there's darker, you know, tones in this image. There's your midtones, which is basically your 18% gray point. And then your highlights and your white, so there's a little bit here, but it's obviously a darker image um, from what this is from. There's more, there's more darker, you know, items. There's more darker tones and everything like that than there's lights. So that's why this would look like this. I mean, this exposure doesn't look bad because with a good exposure, you want to see kind of peaks and valleys and everything like that. But it might be just a touch um, underexposed. So if you took the exposure up a little bit, that would really help. So that is really the easiest way to understand this. Once again, just a quick thing. Your left side of your histogram, no matter what you're looking at, is your darks, your shadows, and everything like that. In the middle is your 18% gray points, your midtones, and everything like that. And on the right side is your pure whites, your highlights, and everything. Um, the lighter parts of the subject. It's really, really easy to see, really easy to under understand. Now, one thing I want to say is... Um, what is clipping? A lot of people say, ah, oh, well, you kind of clipped your highlights a little bit. Well, say if you had this, um, this histogram right here, and all of a sudden there was some, some really, really bright, maybe in the background or something like that, that I picked up, you would get a really large spike here. Um, there's really nothing you could do about that unless you go in and I guess spot correct and everything like that, and you could tone it down uh, and that would probably help it out. But other than that, once again, just try not to clip and try not to stay too close to the sides on the blacks and everything and on the whites. Um, I'll show you in a minute. I'll show you right now. So I'll start off with this one photo I took. This was from an engagement shoot. And, you know, here it goes. So as you see, this is really nice. You got a kind of spotlighting here and everything like that. Uh, this is the fun one that a lot of couples always want to do. Sorry, I don't know why I'm adjusting the camera. And, you know, as you see, it's, it's pretty even here. It's actually not a bad exposure. There's just not a lot of... Um, whites in the subject there's a little bit of darks but if you see i put because they're wearing black shirts and everything like that so if you see if i pull black pull the blacks a little bit back you can see the black points up here they're moving because i'm taking away some information and everything like that but as i'm doing that it's it's clipping a little bit up top here so i could turn these on you could see exactly you know that's the darker areas that i'm looking at you know my pure blacks and I can turn on my highlights and you can see that's just those little spots that's why there's not a ton of information and I'll take these away it's just the brighter sun spots once again that really matters so you can turn those on you can see oh wow yeah you know uh, there's a little bit here on the path and everything like that so theoretically I mean I like the way the image came out when I took it I mean I could I guess brighten it up just a little bit but I don't like the way it looks but theoretically this is what it would be telling me if there is a perfect uh, pretty much a better exposed uh, one just by looking at the graph you can't always trust the um the histogram so you don't always have to but once again something like this with your midtones and everything like that you want this kind of peak and valley look it's really really well exposed basically um 
yeah, so once again, you don't always have to follow what a histogram is saying. All right, so that's one point. So boom, we'll get rid of that. Another point will be from, I'm showing you two photos I did from um, children for uh, portraiture and everything like that. And I chose this one because it's really, really extreme. Here, I'll put it back in color. Uh, I kept the metadata. So as you're seeing, you're seeing it's actually not that bad exposed. Um, you're getting uh, obviously backlighting and everything like that, but I chose this dramatic look just so I can make a video like this, and I love the way it looks in black and white. You know, you're getting that backlight. It's coming in from well, the back, obviously, and it's just it's even. Um, you know, I could obviously brighten it up, but this is what you run into. This is where you, you know, if, if this is how it came out when I took the photo, you're like, wow, well, why does my histogram look like that? You know, there's nothing on the right side. Well, it's because your image is mainly dark. It doesn't always mean it's a bad exposure. Like if you have a, um, you know, a black cat with a darker background, you're going to get something that looks like this, but it could still look good. I mean, once again, it does, you, you never know, but Usually if it's like this, if you have this high of a spike, that means you're way underexposed and you can drag the exposure back. And that's the power of shooting raw, you know, to something a little more even, you know, I have something like that. And it's, I don't know, it's very, very simple, really to understand. Boom, pump the contrast. So one last image I'll show you was from another um, children portraiture shoot that I did. And we were in a park and everything. And once again, you see how it's, it's, it's even with a little bit of, you know, things here and there. Um, I'll turn on the highlights and everything like that. See, it's it's pretty even all around. Uh, so I'll, I'll show you the extreme example. So if it was something like this and you took the photo and you're looking at your history and you're like, whoa, 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 what the heck happened here? Well, just from looking at it, not even really just knowing that, you know, you have to go from white to darker. That's just your exposure. You can adjust using your aperture. You could just using your shutter speed and you get the same thing. So you see, I'm, a, I'm like one and a half stops over where I'm where I should be. So just bring it down to where it's something to where you want it to be. You know, I like it there. I was pretty much almost tack on with the exposure. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's really, really simple to understand. You know, once again, same thing. If it's if it's like this, I mean, you have no whites in your in your image at all. If not even really a gray point, your midpoint. So, I mean, once again, it's very, very easy to understand. Um, that's just how it is. I mean, it's your your dark points, your light points and making the even bounce to whatever you're happy with. I hope this helped you guys out. I know this can be very, very confusing, but it's really just a, a histogram is just a graph that represents your exposure and it gives you your, you know, as I said, a million times, it gives you your dark points, gives you your white points, and you got to find the even medium to where, you know, there is no exact perfect exposure. A perfect exposure could look actually really boring. So it's whatever works for you. As I said, there was, there was a case in there that I thought uh, looked really well over something that it suggested, kill on my mic, it suggested that um, it should be at. So, hey, if you guys have any questions down below, please let me know. I'm here to help you out. It's not as intimidating as it looks. Histograms, they're not that bad. I don't rely on them a ton, but I can see just from obviously where, you know, either where something, you know, is overexposed or underexposed or anything like that, I can adjust accordingly. So that's all I got. Eric Ross to the guy with the eye. Keep an eye out. Don't mind histograms.